let's start so uh what we're going to cover like uh, actually this is a huge topic and you know we can uh, do it in great details but what i'm going to cover is is for from a resident's point of view what's going to help you in reporting and what's going to help you uh, answer the case and what should be your approach basically for liver lesions is what is going to be from my end can you um, hear me fine yeah is is the audio okay I'm just using a mic yeah, just just type a yes if the audio is okay. Yeah, all right, perfect. Okay, so so let's begin then. So, uh, what how we have to approach is in in general liver lesions is always cirrhotic liver versus non cirrhotic liver. Okay, so that's what we're gonna discuss. We're gonna discuss both of these things today. Get a bird's eye view of all almost all of the important lesions in the liver. What is the imaging feature? How do you plan their imaging? is what all we are going to uh, discuss. So before we start with the imaging, uh, in every case of a suspected liver lesion or when you are seeing a liver, call the patient back and, and uh, see all of these things, whether there is any workup that has been done or not. So age is important. Uh, particularly in liver lesions, gender preference is there because you will uh, see and, and we'll discuss that almost all the benign lesions are more common in females. And uh, obviously cirrhosis, uh, alcohol being the most common cause, is more common in males and so are the uh, uh, malignant lesions like HCC, the nodules are more common in males. Hemangioma, FNH, adenoma, all three of the commonest benign lesions are what are common in females and, and the, the preference, preponderance to females having these is huge, you know. So that way uh, gender becomes particularly important in, in uh, uh, narrowing the differentials of a liver lesion. Symptoms, obviously, whether the patient is symptomatic or not. Viral markers, you should assess yourself whether hep B, hep C is positive or not. So a lot of times you will not see cirrhotic changes in the liver, but a patient is a chronic hep B, hep C positive. Again, you start thinking in, uh, on the lines of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, lesions in a cirrhotic liver exposure to drugs, uh, alpha fetoprotein becomes particularly important. You can't rule out a malignancy based on a normal uh, AFP. It is positive in 60 to 70 percent of HCC. So I can't rule it out. But when AFP is positive, I start thinking on the lines of hepatocellular carcinoma. And very, very important is previous imaging, you know. So if patient has had previous MRI, previous CT, you must, must take it for comparison. You have to mention this in your report because we'll talk about LIRADS and you know in LIRADS it's basically the uh, uh, the increase in the size which is also one of the important criteria so that way uh, previous imaging becomes very very important and you must take the image and compare both of the images so this this is what you will do as as a homework for for you know before reporting a case of a suspected liver lesion so that's the baseline that we start off with as always first i'll tell you what the role and planning of each imaging is and then we'll go about an approach and then we'll see individual lesions okay right so talking about ultrasound it's usually the first investigation that you will do a lot of times in uh, in today's day and age you know you will have a patient coming up front for ctmr and then you go backwards and correlate with an ultrasound but either way is ultrasound needs to be correlated in every case that you see on a ct and mr at least at a resident level you must always put a probe on it and see what it's looking like on ultrasound because sometimes when it's very typical it's going to help you like a cyst obviously you guys know that cyst will be best evaluated <coughs> sorry cyst will be best evaluated on the ultrasound you will see an echoic with posterior acoustic enhancement further infectious causes can be best assessed on an ultrasound so i'm not going to dwell into infections of the liver today but overall you know ultrasound will be very important and when you see a hyper echoic lesion you know again it favors a diagnosis of a hemangioma that we shall be discussing so again very very typical appearance of cyst in hemangioma so it really helps you uh, you know narrow down particularly when it's it's an atypical hemangioma on ct and mri like we'll discuss and Doppler also helps you assess the vascular nature like when you see a central spoke wheel kind of a pattern you start thinking on the lines of what 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 are you suspecting if you see the spoke wheel kind of pattern 
what is the lesion that comes to your mind? FNH, perfect. So FNH is what you start thinking on the lines of. So ultrasound really helps you narrow down certain features very well. Coming to the workhorse, that's going to be a multi-phase CT. Now, if you have a dual energy CT, what we used to do at AIMS was we never took a non-contrast. We would generate virtual non-contrast. So if you have a dual energy CT, you would never do a non-contrast CT. But if you don't have a, a, a dual energy CT, then when do you take a non-contrast CT? You don't always take a non-contrast CT. Uh, there are no guidelines per se, but... If it's the baseline, you know, if it's the first imaging that the patient has, it's a good idea to get a, a non-contrast CT as a baseline workup. But if the patient has had prior imaging, there is no point of repeating a non-contrast. You can straight away give contrast and start your multiphase study. So, so this answers who to do a non-contrast for. If you have dual energy CT, we have no dilemma. You'll never do a non-contrast. You'll generate a virtual non-contrast, okay? So what is the role of a non-contrast is to detect one, what is the liver status, you know? Is it hypodense? Is there fatty infiltration? Or if it's hyperdense, we would start thinking on the lines of maybe hemochromatosis and iron deposition. Then we come to the lesion per se. On the non-contrast, are you seeing any lesion? Is there any calcification? Hyperdensity on the non-contrast will favor hemorrhage or focal fat can be appreciated. So this is the role of the non-contrast. So in a baseline scan, it becomes very useful. Okay, then comes the real thing, contrast. You must know these timings, all right? So what you will do is through an injector, you are going to inject the contrast and we will run these three time points. Now, in arterial phase, we have early arterial, we have late arterial. For liver imaging, we are going to, for characterization of the mass, we are going to do a late arterial phase. Is there any indication of an early arterial phase? When would you also want to do an early arterial phase? Anybody can tell me? Trauma? Yeah, okay. In, in context of liver lesion, I mean. Yes, very good. When we want to operate the patient, you know, so either a transplant is being planned or they are considering surgery when they basically want to know the vascular anatomy. So early arterial will show you the vascular anatomy and that's probably the only place where the early arterial scan would help you. So this helps in the vascular anatomy demonstration, but for liver characterization, early arterial is too early, you know, so we will never be be able to say that lesion is enhancing or not on the basis of that okay so always remember we take a late arterial what is the timing 30 to 40 seconds then we take a portal venous phase which we call normally as a venous phase that's the portal venous phase 60 to 70 seconds and then we take a delayed phase which is three to five minutes okay right so if so three things we have to see in the portal venous and delayed phase. One, if it shows washout, I'm sure I don't need to ask you this. We are going to think on the lines of HCC. Now tell me the second one. If I see that the contrast is being retained in equal to the blood pool, jitna blood pool ka contrast hai, utna hi lesion ka contrast hai. What are you going to think of now? Hemangioma, very good. So if the retention is there and the retention is equal to the blood pool. Remember this phrase, right? Retention equal to blood pool, we think of hemangioma. Retention is there, but it's in the central fibrous tissue. It's not equal to the blood pool. So if the mass retains, but it's not equivalent to our blood pool. FNH, um, okay, fine. So the scar can accumulate anything else that comes to your mind. So yes, central scar of FNH can accumulate contrast towards the later uh, phase. That's also fibrous what else fibrolamellar hcc not really cholangio yes that's the most important one right so intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma anytime i say cholangio now in in a liver imaging class i mean intrahepatic mass forming cholangiocarcinoma that has central fibrous trauma that retains contrast and also fnh central scar retains the contrast right so that is retention in the delayed phase but in the fibrous tissue like look at this image can you see it's a delayed phase we can see the contrast excreted from the kidney and you can see that the peripheral aspect of the mass 
are still retains contrast. So this is something which will go in the favor of an intrahepatic cholangio, particularly any other feature that you see, which again tells you that a cholangio बहुत लाइकली है एनी अदर फीचर अपार्ट फ्रॉम द रिटेंशन इन डिलेट फेज गुड यू कैन सी दैट देर इज इंट्रा हिपैटिक बिलियरी रेडिकल डायलिटेशन कैन यू सी दैट द लेफ्ट लो बिलियरी रेडिकल आर डायलेटेड हियर कैप्सुलर रिट्रैक्शन इज अ फीचर बट नॉट इन दिस केस वी आर नॉट सींग एनी कैप्सुलर रिट्रैक्शन पोर से सो हियर द बिलियरी रेडिकल डायलिटेशन इज वॉट इज अगेन फेवरिंग दैट वी आर डीलिंग विद अ केस ऑफ कोलैंजियो एंड वेन वी लुक एट दिस केस द टिपिकल थिंग दैट यू आर सींग नॉन कॉन्ट्रास्ट हाइपोडे you see early arterial enhancement you see what do you see that in the delayed phase it is washing out right so washing out again a, a term we don't compare something for the first years here who all of us in our first year have have misunderstood this that when i say wash out it's not compared to arterial it has wash out when i say wash out it is compared to liver parenchyma right so compared to liver parenchyma the mass has become hypodent so this is for all of the junior jrs here that when i say wash out i don't mean ki arterial mein bright tha ab ye dark ho gaya no compared to background liver it's become hypodent okay so this is a typical scan of a hcc we will study this in detail this was just to give you an idea now why do i do all of these phases